What up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big NCAA basketball show. To check out the entire show, hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on Odds.com. We start at 1 p.m. Eastern. Tulsa Golden Hurricane, 8-5, and 5-3 five, five and in the American at Temple Owls, 3-4, and 2-4 and four in the American. We are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tulsa opens up as two-and-a-half point favorites, and that starts moving immediately. It moves so much so that Bet365 right now has switched Temple to a one-point favorite. They're the first book that I see doing that. The rest of some a couple pickums, and the rest have Tulsa as very small favorites. This total opened up at one twenty-seven and a half. It is up to one twenty-eight and a half. Tulsa coming off its second loss in three games, an ugly eighty-six fifty-nine beatdown delivered to them at Houston on Wednesday night. They were outscored forty-five nineteen in the first half. They turned the ball over 18 times. They were destroyed on the glass, 52-24. 6 senior guard Brandon Rochelle led Tulsa with 18 points. He's the only Tulsa player averaging double digits on the season. The only other player to get double digits in the game was freshman Keyshawn Williams, who came off the bench to hit 10. Their defense that allows just 62.8 points per game got diced for 86. On the season, they shoot 44.6% from the field, just 29.1% from three, and 65.1% from the foul line. Temple's also coming off a loss to Houston. On Saturday, Temple hosted Houston and lost 68-51. They struggled offensively. They hit 34% from the field, 25% from three, led by scoring by 6'8 junior Jake Forrester, who went for 15 points, eight boards. He averages 9.3 bo- uh, points, 6.4 boards on the season, hits 56.1% from the field, and is listed as questionable to play with a hand injury. Uh, Like Tulsa, Temple has just one player averaging double digits. Freshman guard Damian Dunn, who averages 14.6. Dartmouth transfer senior guard Brendan Berry averaging 8.6 points per game. He is hitting 51.4% from three. But Temple struggles offensively. Averages 37.5% from the field, 32.9% from three, and just 66.5% from the foul line. Max, you've given us some 1 p.m. afternoon action. Exciting, exciting spot for us gamblers. Tulsa, Temple, take it away. Yeah, first off, Jim, I understand where this line is going in regards to the total. I do respect the move and do agree with it. I think that this is a game that Temple is probably lined about Temple is probably lined about maybe three points under where I think that they should have been. I think that this is a total that usually you're gonna see somewhere in the one. 30 to 134 range and seeing it this low is pretty drastic. Um, When I look at this Temple team, while they have had a delayed start to the season, they do have, like you mentioned, two quality offensive weapons in the backcourt. I think, though, what's really going to make a big difference for this team is what they're getting out of their frontcourt players when it comes to J.P. Mormon and Devondre Perry. Both these guys bring good size, good strength, and can do all the intangibles. What I think that really is needed for this Temple team is to just come to the realization that you need to be a slow Temple team. You need to limit possessions. You need to keep games ugly and make just enough shots to win and for your backers to cover. I think that with the common opponent of both of them playing Houston recently and Tulsa beating Houston outright, I think that this is a spot where I disagree with the line movement towards Temple. Although Tulsa's had problems the last two times out on the road with Wichita and Houston, I do think that this is a much different quality of opponent. Watching that Houston and Temple game, while I do recognize the fierceness of Brendan Barry's three-point game, it's really going to come down to can he get his shots off against this Tulsa defense. And you can be damn sure that Tulsa is going into this game thinking, well, we know what we got to do from the get-go. We got to first allow this Temple team to be indecisive on offense in the half court where you regularly are going to see them use 20 seconds of shot clock in order to get a good shot at the bucket. I think that's 
stopping Damian Dunn from getting in the paint and being able to drop teardroppers or just get to the rim and get to the free throw line is something they're going to have to focus on. What Tulsa does great, Jim, is that they make their layups, they dunk the ball a lot, and they make close proximity shots. They're not going to get hung up on trying to make a whole bunch of threes. If it's dropping and if it's there, they will take it. But I can guarantee you, if they are missing open three-point looks, the coaching staff's going to rein that in and tell them, take it to the bucket, let's get physical. When it comes to Tulsa, they got to go into the half with the lead. A good start for them is imperative, especially on the road, especially with them being a little walking wounded. And I don't think that they're going to have the same problems doing that like they did against Wichita and Houston. The offensive glass is always going to be a concern, but you're not going to really have a ton of really great size, like like five-man size. So... I think that Tulsa definitely has an opportunity to go on the road, right the ship, and beat an opponent and a conference foe that on paper they should and by the numbers they should. When you look at Tulsa, they are shooting and converting 53% of their two-point buckets. They're not going to try and exploit Temple's three-point defense because that will take them out of their offensive flow. And with their point guard play from Elijah Joyner, that's going to be key. His ball facilitation and his ball movement is going to be vital to get Brandon Rochelle and Keyshawn Embry Simpson good shots at the bucket. I think that this is a Tulsa team that finally gets a cupcake that they can devour, and it's not going to have a razor in the middle. So I'm going to take Tulsa. I think that defensively this is where they come to play most. And just make sure that you pick wisely who you put on the free throw line because there are guys that you can exploit putting on the free throw line, and then there are guys that can exploit you like a woman under the bridge given rough $25 $25 hand jobs. Mm. Mm. Would you like them on the money line at minus 110 available at FanDuel and Bet MGM? And let me just check out here. Uh, or you could have them plus one at minus 115 at Bet 365. Or you could have them minus one and a half at plus 102. I'll take the money line minus 110. Minus 110 on the money line that's available at FanDuel. And let's lock that in. Line shopping on odds.com's odds page. Actually, Jim, can we stop and can I actually take the one and a half at the plus price? You can. Minus one and a half at plus 102. That is available right now at FanDuel. We are shooting late Monday night, January 25th, for Tuesday, January 26th action. And Max is moving on this FanDuel price, getting a plus line at minus one and a half. And that is locked in. And that is 1 p.m. Eastern action, a little afternoon action for Maxwell Smart and for all of us who will roll with that spot.